Not live. We're live, but not live. Live, but not live. We're hanging out until it's time to go. I'm not shit. doing anything to have 100 people you watching me, Tony. You can't even see what you're working on today. Nope. That's great. You're working on that orange washcloth. I'm going to paint an orange washcloth. It's going to be great. Are you excited for Captain Marvel, by the way? Looks pretty sweet. I am so excited for that movie. I, I'll i be honest. It's, like, it's not one of the ones where I'm, I can't not watch the trailer over and over again, but it looks really good. There was a, uh, somebody online did the trailer, but to Destiny's Child Survivor, that Ooh. was dope. I watched that one a couple of times. Ooh. I was like, this fits really great. Now, is it as good as the um, Thor, I Need a Hero mashup? The Thor, I feel like they're two different things. Like the Thor, I Need a Hero one just makes me giggle. The Captain Marvel, Destiny's Child Survivor one makes me go, yeah, this movie's going to be badass. It's all, it's, all, it's all about music, right? Music yeah. music makes definitely helps the movie. I was excited whenever we saw it in uh, the trailer in the theater. I might have definitely went, yeah, and my kid might have definitely like sunk in his chair and been like, God, you're such a nerd. I mean, it, it looks really good. I'm I'm very curious to see like, you know, what they do. Did how, Tony how just leave goes. in the Tony middle? Tony did. Tony was like, "I can't take you, nerds anymore. I'm out. I'm out." He I'm really excited right to see you paint this washcloth, though. Like, I I'm feel paint like the washcloth. I feel good. like you've got a very, very orange canvas to work with. It's going to be uh, real hard to blend uh -huh. on an absorbent material, <laughs> but we're going to do what we can. Oh man! So for our Halloween costumes that we did for my my kids, they did Deadpool and Black Panther, and so I wound up painting a bunch on on material with my airbrush yeah absorbent material is it's something else it's something else you effectively you take off the clothes and by the time you're done your your skin has the paint on it just, too. You just look like it in. yeah you're uh i saw i didn't see your kids costumes no well I they're saw, on i think they're on facebook okay yeah. i saw you your costume yep i and always your wife's cable. Costume. yeah and she was domino from the and classic like comics it was your good cable arm yeah. It was super it was, a, it was a good it was a good like uh first try. It was our first it was our first costuming thing that we had ever done. And then of course we made a Black Panther helmet for my youngest kid who wanted to be Black Panther. Which and is we did dope. some we did some Deadpool stuff, which wasn't quite as foam intensive, but had it on there for my older kid. So we were very marveled up, as we typically are in my household, because that's just the way you I keep yeah. I keep getting all those limited edition like Marvel posters from you know all the different screen printers and stuff. I've reached the point where I have so many I filled the basement, and I was like I don't know what to do with this new Infinity Warner I just got. And Courtney, bless her little heart, she's like, well, there's room in like the staircase down to the basement, so I guess you could move this like beach picture you took and put on canvas and like put the Infinity War there. So I've got that, and I've got like room for maybe three more, and I've got a Thor Ragnarok one coming that I showed you, the one that glows in the dark. The one that I didn't order? Yeah, the one that you didn't order because you're a fool. I totally should order that poster. I wanted it, and then I didn't order it. Where did Tony go? We can't do this without no, Tony. No, we, we can't even start without Tony. We, people are in there, though. They're talking. Yeah, I see that we got Hoppy the Hoppy de Punk. Look, Striker, I can say ass. Ass is okay. Onino J. It's fine. Rikers that word Iron. is fine. Striker 911, what up? Hit a kill says Will's last get your paint on sad face. And that's right. Uh, this is kind of like my first one too. I think I've only done one get your paint on with you. Because typically I had managerial meeting duties. Yeah, at this usually time. there's a but now I'm in my lame duck presidency. So I was like, well, <laughs> this... <laughs> you don't really need me there. So I'm gonna go hang out with Dallas one more time. Exercise one this more authority. Time. Yeah. One more time. Well, and yeah, I mean Tony came back though. We got a yeah, secret model that I don't even know what's under this rag. That know, you're gonna make rag. me. Oh, I feel a, I feel a paint lid. Yeah, a paint lid. Well, if we lid. mounted it for you. You know, just make it nice. No peeking. I'm not peeking. I'm touching. He's touching. He's feeling. He's feeling under the rag. You see with your eyes, not with your hands. Uh, you can see with your hands. People do it all the time. Some people do. Not Dallas. Dallas can't do that. No. Okay. I may have. I may have. Uh... Did you break everything? No, I think I got it. No, maybe. I'll say that. I mean, we were live on Twitch. I saw people yeah, talking. Yeah, we're live on Twitch. That's not... So we're not live on Facebook? Facebook. That's what, we're, that's what I'm trying to get at. Facebook and is always the problem. On, and that's not correct. Change that. I mean, you have a minute before it Let's matters. This. <laughs> I think it matters before right now. Before people start getting angry. Does it matter right now? What, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? I'm trying, there, to, trying to make this all work. I'm trying to drive this train. This just shows that we have a really whimsical a human train. nature. Whimsical human nature? Yeah. Isn't We're it human some, error? Some fun-loving criminals. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that reference. Fun-loving criminals. Put them up, dog. Okay, there we go. That <laughs> Put was... them up, dog. It's the fun-loving criminals. We got it. I owned that CD okay. when I was Hello, in middle school. Facebook. He did it. He did it. He did it. Yay. We're here. I'm not quite sure how we're going. How we're going to what? How we're going to paint anything on an orange washcloth. Are you going to paint this rag? You got this. Just make a face. Difficult. All right. Hello, everyone. And then okay. you can put it on a base. So got everybody in there. I hear that's pretty popular. Faces on bases. The, yeah, you put the face on the base. Yeah. And the, put the base yeah. on the face. Don't put the base on the face. That covers up the face. Oh. All right. Fair train. Point. Train's ready? Oh, are we ready? Get I mean, yourself set. Go ahead. He's set. He's been set for a while. You're the one sitting. who left. Are you what telling me this? not to slouch? I'm doing my, I'm doing okay. my breathing. See, they Your get to breathing? see the behind yeah. the scenes, like pre, like how, how we get ready. How we this get nonsense? Ready this pre nonsense? This is my favorite part. It's like when we got. Look, I'm, when we go I'm not on camera. That doesn't mean I don't, it's I don't get anxious. Would you, would you just start things? Tony, okay. play the Here drums. Shh. Three, two, Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. It's 10 a.m. It's in the Pacific time zone, and that means it's get your paint on time. I'm your host, Dallas, and with me, with, with, with me, with me, with <laughs> me today is our special guest, Mr. Will Schick. Woohoo! What's up, guys? The glad, Schick Tater. Glad to be here. I know. In the house. I'm, uh, as we were discussing, I'm, I'm using my, my executive power one last time to make you paint what's oh, an orange washcloth. That's what we've been telling <laughs> you that it is. Everybody's yeah. been asking. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we also have Tony, Tony Konchak. Good morning. Rocking that command console back over there in the corner. In the dark corner, that I can't see his hands. I'll be honest, it's, it's not a very impressive console. Like, I thought no, it was going to be way more, It's a computer know. with some added knobs. Where are all of the flashing lights? The now, 80s promised me flashing where's lights. Where's the what? beeps and the boops? Look, man, I got... No beeps, no sweeps, no boops. The boops. sweeps, the creeps, and the bleeps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the what, the what, the what? <laughs> That's the greatest scene in that movie. <laughs> I swear to God, that scene I can watch it. I just, I just die. It's mostly the uh, commandant's face. It's just, yeah. like, it's just like, what the hell? What is going on? <laughs> you like, know. <laughs> I forgot what we're doing. You gotta, you gotta reveal okay. what's under the washcloth. I think. So, if you watched um, the Weekly Rumble this past Tuesday. Tony and I duked it out over a game of Monster Apocalypse, and I was challenged to a get your iron painter on. So Schick has provided me with a mystery model that I'm going to paint. Yep. I don't know you're gonna you're gonna is. flip it over. You, you do the big reveal. Are do we big, ready to do yeah, this? just do it. Do it. You don't have that long to paint this thing. <laughs> oh, oh my. So uh, yeah, like I think two years ago or something, uh, I I created this. This terminus. You tell him what this is. I'm just going to start it, it's figuring just, it out. It's just, it's terminus. Uh, he's rocking some prototyped Denegra three wings. So those are resin wings from, from a Denegra three, like prototype we did before we sent it off to get plasticized. Uh, plasticized and then I basically happen. hacked the crap out of him, uh, grabbed a bunch of asphyxia soles, and then just went ham. And, uh, and this is what came out. So, you know, good luck. Uh, I'm excited to see what you do with this thing. Good with, with zero preparation. With zero preparation <laughs> zero or knowledge <laughs> of what it would be. Uh, but sky's the limit. So, you know, just, just show us what, you, what Dallas can do. Not in an hour. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, immediately we have a Zenith Primal. Primal. We have a Zenith Priming. So, obviously, I appreciate that for speed painting. And I'm just going to start with some... Um, I, I did do you a solid by <laughs> Zenith Highlighting. I know how much you love that. I watch I gonna, watch your stream all the time, Dallas. We're going to switch gears immediately. Now, but like I told you, it's been really cold in Seattle recently. So I was like, I could use the airbrush and make the Zenith Highlight really nice. But it was too frigid in my garage. <laughs> so I just quickly <laughs> grabbed two cans of spray paint. And was like, shh, shh, good enough. He'll deal. So my favorite thing was about, like, speaking about the weather, uh, my buddy came up and visited me for a whole week. He just sent me a text one day. He's like, what are you doing this week? And I was like, well, I'm working. He goes, cool. Can I come up? And I was like, absolutely. So he lives in Vegas. He comes up and he's just like, 
He's like, oh, it's it's chilly. It's kind of cold. And I'm like, actually, this is nice. This is this is basically what it is. He leaves, and immediately it's just like everything is frosted. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you a parting gift of winter. I was like, I was like, I just convinced somebody else to move up here, and then we get the cold. And I'm like, sucker. All right, so what color are we going for first here, Dallas? I'm, so I'm curious. Where are you going to start? I was going to start with armor wash, but then I figured I need some metallic in there. Mm. So I'm going to really quickly, I'm going to grab some Quicksilver, and I'm going to start dabbing some Quicksilver into the metal parts. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. this will give us a little... You all are going to see my face today, which is terrible. I'm sorry. So we can just kind of see your glasses and that, that manly beard you've got going on. The beard. The beard that you swore you were going to cut off. What, seven months ago or something? Yeah, I just keep forgetting. And you just kept it. Every time I drink something, though, I totally want to get rid of the mustache. <laughs> they, uh, they, do, they do get in the way. They get lot. in the way. Especially when it starts to curl under your lips and you can feel it like oh, as God. you're eating food and stuff. It's literally A couple of those errant hairs. Tony doesn't know because he keeps his at like 5 o'clock shadow level. But Tony's five o'clock shadow is most people's two week like growth. This is yeah. I'm. I'm Does it grow longer I'm than that? Stuck, do you trim I'm it? Stuck in the late nineties. Oh yeah. Do you no, trim it? Grows. I, yeah. I Does beard, it grow? I, beard I don't it. think it does. I think that's just naturally when where it, where when your it starts hair getting stops. about where yours is. That's mm. when I start, start trimming, trimming it up. It yeah. Usually once a week, I do do a shave a, and trim a week. Shave and a haircut. Two bits. Two bits. That's how you get rabbits out of walls. Two bits. Oh, with the song, yeah. Uh -huh. That's tunes in general, isn't it? I think just yeah, just tunes. Yeah, general. tunes can't they can't they can't resist. That movie is great. By you the know, way. I, Rikers Iron. I, I believe is talking about beards. It says once it gets to a certain size, it becomes a life form that's dependent on you. Uh, I think that that size varies, but I definitely agree with once once you've had the beard for a while, mm -hmm. the, the, even the shape of the beard might change. But I've I have shaved. Uh, Two times completely the beard off in the last fifteen years, uh, and it it doesn't work. Like I always want the beard back immediately. <laughs> it's like, oh, yep, there's my face. Right, let's get that beard back on here. I think it's because you actually become dependent on the beard. It's the other way around. Like, if you just think about Jr. You know, and that massive like <laughs> thing that used to be on his face. Somehow he managed to like fight it into submission, but it never really went away. A great well, big bushy beard. It was so bushy. Yeah, like the beard gets significance from you, yeah. and then just refuses to leave. Like, like he effectively just had a bristly shamwow on his face. If he was not careful while drinking <laughs> soup, he would look down at his bowl and be like, "I didn't realize I ate it all." You're like, "No, no, <laughs> no, it's no. just all in your beard, all your beard sir. Give it, a, give it a squeeze, just get squeeze a little it pinch out. the bottom." You know that's a contest, right? They do like Ugh. beard absorption contests. Do they really? Yeah, Isn't that part of the contest that somebody has to eat it later. They, they take their beards mm. and they shove it down into um, yeah. beer, and whoever can absorb the most beer into their beard wins. The beer beard? You, yeah, you <laughs> shove it down into like beer. Do you remember? Or, or is it beard? Did you ever watch beard. Cheers? Like way back when? Let's yeah. oh. let's totally date ourselves. Oh God, here. I love Cheers. Actually. So do you remember when they had the beard contest? And like Carlo was throwing sticky balls at their oh, beards, yeah. <laughs> trying to hit them in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> They're like, "What does this prove?" She's like, "Nothing. I just want to throw things at your face." I was like, "Yeah, Carlo's the best." All right, let's talk about some painting. Philip wants to know if you water down or thin out your quicksilver, or are you doing more of a dry brush right now? Um, I don't. This is paint smash, and I went ahead and grabbed pig iron. Um, I'm just all over the place. Uh. This is just kind of paint smash. I'm just dabbing it on with the tip of the brush. The tip of the brush is very bristly. So I'm getting some texture because I want to maintain some of that texture from the zenithal priming. So I'm just putting a little bit of silver in there because then whenever I do my washes, we can have some of that metallic look to the uh, those areas. And I'm not really sure what we're what color we're going to do this. But... I mean, if you want to know my opinion, I think you need to do like super dark dark iron armor and some bright red ass like soul glow let your soul glow yeah isn't that from black dynamite soul glow it is from coming to coming america. to america coming to america all right i remember i remember what it was in black dynamite that movie's amazing though if you haven't watched it you need to Naros2007 wants to confirm that that is Terminus' normal sword with the souls just wrapped around. Yep. Yeah, it is It is his normal sword. I, I sawed it off uh, of his hand, and then I did a bunch of repositioning, and then I just took 
asphyxia souls and bent them around the sword and stuff. But uh, outside of the wings, everything you see that is terminus is terminus. I didn't change any of it. So it was just a lot of clever cutting and then, you know, some hap dash puttery. Clever. Let's get some uh, deathless metal up in here. Deathless there. metal! Oh, we got Doug Seacat in here. Uh-oh. This My man! His terminus looks pretty great. That's how they fixed him up after Stryker broke his last body. Oh. Well, it, canonical. Know. There you go. This is this is new old terminus. Seacat says. Seacat says. One of the things I'm a little sad about or I thought about doing was try to heat gun the wings because they're resin so that they get a little droop in them, you know? Rather than being straight up and down, but I think the straight up and down works pretty well. I mean, yeah. like like bent over out, like a little yeah, curl? Like, like you know, like, like the gravity. curling, the oh. curling in. Oh yeah, like he's like he's swooping his wings. You know? I got you. Swoopy swoop, swoop swoop a doop, swoop a doop, swoop a doop. We just need some uh, darker armor plates here, here and there. Oh, Doug's already pulling back on his canonical statements by saying maybe <laughs> in quotes. Come on, Doug. Be a be a writer with the brass balls and just, just make statements. It's, or, it's already out there in the world. Just roll with it. I mean, honestly, Striker 911, Striker 911, like Doug could be like, this is not true at all. And I would still tell him that that was the fact. <laughs> Doug and I have had some epic arguments over my 10 years here. I think there's a there's a somebody on Facebook who's accusing you of shenanigans in Dallas's paints today for shenanigans. Yeah, shenanigans. Well, it's an iron painter. He didn't know what he was painting. Know, he didn't know what he was painting. I did not know what I was painting. Uh, but no, I didn't. I didn't put that was no that was a JR thing. The 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 mixing medium in the paint bottle. That that was all JR's like masterminding. That was terrible. I know. I actually want this to look good, not like that. Whatever it was, that abstract creation that Dallas still has on his desk. It is still on my desk. It's true. We're just going to put some texture in here. Yeah, but Doug, New Balder looks so cool, despite the fact that he just took off the hood. Sometimes you just got to get out of the hood, man, and then like show your bald head. Be bald and proud. That's all I'm saying. Let your soul glow. Let your soul glow. The bald is the window to the soul. I don't think that's true. Okay, what are you what are you adding now, Dallas? So this is Cossite uh, flush wash. Cossite flush wash. So I'm just doing it over his little leather bits. Because he's got little leather bits. We're going to keep some stuff dark. Okay, Cossite flush wash. Incoming now. <laughs> that was the... Way it faded on there didn't match up with my sound effect. No, I'm, it was I'm disappointed like in myself. Slow. Yeah, no, I like it. It it's, needed to, it needed to slam in like it's very <sighs> like B movie seventies. You're just like what's happening on screen is not <laughs> at all what I think they meant to have happen, but it's fine. What do I got over here? I mean, we've discussed that, Tony. Your greatest aspiration was to be a B movie filmmaker. That's man, that's quite accurate. I know. Well, you, you Tony, know. we should get together. I've made some B movies. Little bit of cheese. A satisfactory level of filmmaking ability. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just enough. And a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Tons of heart. That's Tons what of heart. Tons, Tons of, of heart. heart. I got heart. You know I had heart? Ed Wood. He had heart. He did. He also had a lot of pie tins. <laughs> lot of I don't pie even tins. know what that means, but it made me laugh. Tons of pie tins. You know exactly what it means. Have you ever seen an Ed Wood movie? I mean, he's pie tins <laughs> for like everything. Real heavy cosite flesh wash. The the cephalic stuff, Travis, uh, that was Tony and Ed and a trip to a butcher shop. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and a lot of plastic sheeting in our conference room. My God. You guys were in there for like two days. Nobody could use the conference room. It was a good Just time. like an abattoir. Yeah, we got to take a bunch of uh, uh, various tools out of my garage, including mm-hmm. a power drill to, <laughs> to a, a pork roast, some pig skin. And I think at one point the uh, the drill was was going, it hadn't stopped yet, and Ed pulled it up out of the meat, and I think it actually splattered onto uh, one of our graphic designers who was in there helping us for the day. Uh, you guys do like to talk about that time you filmed that film. It was a lot of fun. I mean, that was a great one. 
that was it was a good concept. I I still remember your first your first day when you walked in all bright eyed and bushy tailed and we're like, so this thing called Colossals. We need a <laughs> video of it. And you have three weeks. That was day one. Yeah. And you were like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> we're just like, you got this, right? I mean, you said you were fast. It worked. It did. It was it was amazing. I love that video. That video was fantastic. That video sold me, let me tell you. Did it? Oh my was, god. Are you was kidding? that where you're just like, this is this is the thing. This is the new thing. I mean, I was already in. I was already in deep, but but Col- that colossal video, man, that was like it's all about big robots, and I was just like, Oh, here comes the big robots. I will uh yeah, I'll never I'll never forget when when Ed walked into my office when the colossals were finally like the the conquest was finally like prototyped and done in resin, like the real one because we had had we had out RPs in them before and like mock-ups and stuff and looking at them they just you're like that's pretty cool but I don't know. I don't know. It's very very questionable in terms of were they going to live up to the hype. And then he like comes in and he just puts the conquest. He's like I have something for you. He puts it down <laughs> on my desk. I was like Holy sh- balls! Yeah. Like that is amazing. Like I, I was I was blown away. And then I stole it from him and I ran it around upstairs and I showed everybody else upstairs because he had shown everyone downstairs. Like this is mine now, and uh, it was so cool. It was so cool just to see it. And I was like, oh, we did, we did something amazing. Like the team just built this thing that was so so freaking cool. And then we got to show it off at Temple That was awesome. What was the the next video you made for us was like a tutorial video or something, right? We had to make like it wasn't just the colossal video to make though. We were like, you have to no, make like six there, videos. There were there were like you had to do, five promo you had to do a videos. There was one. one for yeah, there was one for Heap, yeah. one for IKRPG, yep. one yep. for War Room. Yep, that may have been it. It may have been it. it may have been those. Like, four. I feel like there were there like six of them that one. were like you have to do these. There four. were a lot. Yeah, there was like six videos in five weeks for a giant keynote, and that was the first one ever that we did too mm-hmm. in that manner. So it was a it was a big deal. Tony, big deal, kind of check. Seven years later. <laughs> Can't believe you've been here seven years. I know. It's crazy. Man. I'm so young. I know. You are. You're like a little baby. You're barely learning to walk at this point. I know. Compared to all of us old people. Ron was having that little conversation yesterday. And well, Ron's chat, ancient. Okay. And he's just like, Oh, I remember when we did this. Oh, back when my... D- and I was like, yeah, I'm tired. You know what? I haven't been here that long, but come on. Come on. Come on. You don't have to rub it in. You've got some questions on uh, exactly what your painting technique is here from some people who just joined us. Smash. Paint smash. Paint smash. Paint can, smash. Can you, give, can you give a detailed description of how one would paint smash? Mash, m- mash. That's, um, that wasn't really what I meant. So I meant more of like a technical description. No, that is paint smash. That's it. You that just is, you just make mouth noises at the model mars, and mars. paint appears. So I need some contrast. I need to create some shadows. I need to line stuff. Um, I need a nice color for my metals. So I mashed on that real dry pig iron and quicksilver over the metal areas. Now I mixed uh, armor wash and caustic flesh wash together to get real dingy uh, metal color, and I'm literally just washing it and mashing it over top of literally everything. I, mean, I feel good about giving you this model for my garage because it's it allows you to bring out the big brushes. I feel oh, like yeah. you don't use your big brushes enough. They were feeling unloved. My big brushes get unloved. I think they get loved when it's, when it's appropriate. Um, but definitely I went to uh, – actually, I went down to Danny's desk and I was just like – I saw a great big – is that, what size is that? This is a P3, like, large dry brush. So, like, a size 50? Six? 50. <laughs> size 50. Size terminus. Bam. <laughs> so I'm just going to just plow on this wash to darken everything. Somebody in the chat... I, I lost it now, but they were asking about an IKRPG TV like series. Oh, that's uh, oh, looks yeah, like Alec. Alec. 
I mean, you kind of did that with our with our Widower's Wood series of videos. Yeah, we did together for. Yeah, we did two parts. We did uh, some for Unleashed and then some for Widower's, Widower's mm-hmm. Wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was definitely um, uh, a lot of fun and something that I would like to have <laughs> on my plate more often. Uh, yeah, working working with the the designers to get the art together and then just make roughly r- animating ridiculous it ridiculous jokes. Yes, they I... were they were terrible jokes, but man, were they funny. I still want to do more voice acting for you, Tony, since you won't let me. That's not true. No, I, did, I mean, I think he's referring to the Infernal video. I got, he got cut. He got passed over. I got, mm. I got passed. He, didn't, I got he passed. didn't make the final edition. No comment. Mm. You could do a director's edition of that and have Dallas's voice in there instead. That's true. Just be like, am this I, am is I what allowed it, to have directors? Uh, you're the director, aren't you're you? You're the director. Oh, yeah. Look, I got a day and a half left. <laughs> Sign. <laughs> Sign it. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the end of the day on Friday when all staff inboxes just get filled at like 5:59 with uh, like 20 plus uh, emails, executive emails from mm-hmm. you. Just like this yeah. is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. It's gone mad with. And power. then you just hear the door click. <laughs> yeah. No more shit. No more shit. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that could happen that way. Or I would always tell people downstairs. I was like, look, if you. If you have something you want me to sign, I mean, I'll sign it. It doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean anything at this point. But, you know, I, I'm happy to sign whatever form you have. I got all mine signed before you, your lame duck. You did. Times. You did. You, you did it right. You were a month early, like people are supposed to do for vacation and such. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for vacation. What, what what are your plans? Are you just gonna have a staycation? You're gonna go somewhere? I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna staycation it up again. I think. I don't know. I might go to Cruzy's actually. He's got a little place up in the woods. We might go up there and play some games together. Some yeah. board games. Just go up to the woods and hang out with Cruzy and play some board. Games. That's what he wants me to do. Yeah, I, I I don't know that I would. I don't know that I would be brave enough to go to the woods with Cruzy for a week Come given his isolated man. lifestyle. I, I feel like that's that movie ravenous right there. <laughs> Can we talk about the soundtrack to that? I was going to go the other I was going to say, you go up with Cruzy, you come back alive. Like, no, he'll not keep he, you alive. Not when he invites you to his woodsy cabin uh, well, yeah. by yourself to yeah. play games. <laughs> He's there to eat you. He's going to hunt you. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Finally, I get to know what man tastes like. That movie Ravenous, by the way, that soundtrack, amazing. Uh, I love the music. We got a lot of Geist, Gist, uh, in in Twitch talking mm-hmm. about the epic retribution casters. Um, I'll take credit for the one that you'll see next week. That's fine. Ooh. Whoa, teaser! I can do that. I know. Look at me, mad with power. <laughs> Just drunk. Whatever happens at this point, don't care. What is it true? It's true. You know it's true. You've been working on him. I think you painted him. Well, Jordan painted him. The or her. The retribution caster? Yeah. The one with the big gun. Not painted. Not painted? Not painted. You better get on that, Dallas. I know. Not painted. We've had other things uh, painting in the queue. Yeah, like what? Uh, Reveal to us your secrets. Well, I mean... Uh, <laughs> my I broke just, him. He's like, I don't. I'm trying to remember what I, I can talk what about. This. What can I talk about? Oh my gosh, this guy's huge. He's very big. You got this, though. I I believe in you. Believe in the me that believes in you. Okay, That's we're, right. we're 20 minutes in. We got some good coverage, though. I know. I mean, I mean he almost. I mean, it's a done. smashy wash, but yeah, but I mean, we're not looking for you know. But it looks like a studio. It looks like a thing. Here. It does. It looks like he skinned a lot of people for those wings. That's what, what I want. Tell us, tell us what your plan is and what you want to accomplish in the next uh, 40 or so minutes. I just want to utilize light to make you feel like I did something. <laughs> that is such an evasive answer. And yet you understand exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> if anybody understands exactly what I'm saying, it's you. The most practiced artist I've ever met. 
Tony Konachek. Something for Signar? Spoil for something Yeah, for spoil Signar? something for Signar. I don't, I don't know if I have anything. anything I can spoil for Signar. I'm not saying there's not anything to spoil yeah, for. Yeah, the, the only I things can't. that I can think of are like so big that even my lame duck presidency can't get away with it. <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm know, pretty oh, sure that somehow they just turn off the stream remotely. <laughs> like somebody who's not even watching would just be like, wait, what? Exactly. Nope. Uh, yeah, there's some. Yeah I, yeah, I know some stuff, but I can't spoil stuff yet for that. For them. I mean, that's kind of the way it is with a lot of War Machine stuff currently. There's there's some pretty big, big stuff coming. Like, but it's it's kind of a huge secret. So, you know, it's a thing. Okay, so I'm gonna take pure armor wash. I'm going to put it over top of some of these wings in the darker areas. And I'm going to rinse my brush and get a little blend on that wash. Sorry. Yes, you can blend a wash. Are you adding a new color? Is it still nope, just flush? armor wash. Okay. Armor, armor wash, wash. cosite flush armor wash. wash. So this armor wash and cosite, I'm just, it's it's madness. There is no, <laughs> there's no, there's, there's no, no mix, there's, there's no ratio. No, this is just whatever happens, happens on the model and it's fine. It'll, it'll be. He's old and dingy. So, I mean, really you can get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the I'm, fun thing about I'm utilizing pricks. that fact. It's like colorful drabbiness right now. <laughs> Tell me more art critic, Tony. <laughs> well, I just... no, you started go. Yeah. Y- yeah. Well, now I got to find words. It's like, I just try to make a comment. Nope. <laughs> so there's a lot of color coming through that works with like everything is very toned down, but it doesn't just look black and white. I need a blow dryer. Uh, don't you have one of those? Not usually, up here. Usually one over there. Is there one over here? There's usually. I thought you had one. Do I have one Do over here? You might have gotten moved. Do you know get you a blow dryer? That's the... We can find one for you. Tony. What blow dryer now? I I I, I, I could it, really use like, one downstairs. By your desk, right? Or uh, by Jordan. Jordan. Shit, hold down the fort. All right, I'll hold it down. I can't. I can't tappy tap like you can. I don't understand all the flashing buttons. There's just oh, too many buttons. I can't see the chat. Tony, yeah. wait, no. Oh, all right. Did well, you turn it off? No, he didn't turn it off. It's just not there, and I don't know how to get back to it. And if I touch something, I might destroy everything. So, It'll be chat, um, you can ask questions. I can't see them, uh, but you know, I'll just try to to guess what what's happening. Or something. So I'm gonna mix some beaten purple, carnal pink, and a dot of armor wash. Oh, John's come to save the day! <laughs> Yay! Good. All right, thanks, John. John came in. He heard our plight. Now we can see the chat. We're gonna put a little purple in his little outfit. Sarah has a good point. You do have to kind of be careful when you blow dry him because of those giant wings. You don't yes. want him to like actually fly away. Just launch. That's possible. Although the rest of him is just all metal, so he's pretty heavy. Jared would be so proud I'm putting purple on this guy. Jared would be proud of the purple? Oh, yeah. Was Jared a big purple guy? He is always trying to get me to paint something purple. Do you not like purple? I love purple. My I have entire nothing against is purple. Purple is an amazing color. I agree. Yeah, I but just, you don't paint with purple. That's had, what I'm hearing. I haven't had the correct opportunity. Mm, that's what somebody says when they don't like purple, but they want to be like PC about it. I, I don't There's like, you hate purple, don't you? We can believe what we want. Oh, oh, Tony got a hairdryer. It's about to get all, all blowy in here. I mean, to be fair, John can't control me once I'm not here anymore and just watching the streams. I'll curse as much as I want. It'll just be through chat. <laughs> so, you know. Ah. I'm pretty sure that Dallas Champ. can control. You're not going to you're not going to heat him so much his wings droop, are you, Dallas? No. Yeah, he's got this. Mainly this area is all I care about. Hopefully you can hear it. Can you hear me? Can you I still hear, hear me? Yep, I'm right. still here. 
I just want to dry this area that I'm going to work on because this is now my focus area. Because I want to get some purple in his sleeves and I want to get some green on those soles and then maybe a little green in other places. Did you already start putting a purple on there? Yeah. Okay. What color? Yeah, you can see it on his, on his, uh, in his little floofy yeah, pirate. Yeah, little floofy pirate sleeves. Pirate sleeves. What, uh, what color was that? Beaten purple, carnal pink. Was that you making a hair dryer noise? Or are you yeah, just that's getting excited for the hair dryer. Woo! I feel like the hair dryer was doing a good enough noise. I don't know that we needed you to do the noise too. No, you needed me to. All right, that's fair. Okay, here it is. Here it comes. Oh, that's way better. That pink looks it's white. Still cheesy, but. Much more appropriate. I don't, I don't think your pink is pink, man. It's pink. Those it, are the swatches I get. That swatch is white. Dallas Artist Eye. That swatch That's, is white. It's well, pretty, my, it's, my monitor is not pink. the best. It's pretty pink. Are you trying to argue that white is pink? I'm trying to argue that pink is pink and white That's is white. That's a weird argument. Pink. The two can That's be close. Pink. This is pink. Cool black. Where are you at? Tony Explosions. Tony Explosions. Oh, let's do Sanguin. Sanguin base. Sanguin base. Sanguin base. Sanguin base on the inside poofs. Don't you weathering widget my model? <laughs> <laughs> that is rude. <laughs> oh, we could. You you keep your weathering widgets <laughs> away from that. Need to rough him up a bit. All right, I'm going to do Sanguin base and some mixing medium. Sanguine base and mixing medium. Yeah, and we're going to sanguine base these inside poofs. Okay, sanguine base. Was this probably not the best color for that? Oh, he'll just look like he, you know, morphed out of a clown. It'll be fine. A pirate clown? A pirate clown! That'd be kind of terrifying, actually. Hey, okay, kids! Okay, here comes... I'm Captain oh, Wacko. What what did you want it to do? I gotta zoom in. Wait, what? I'm gonna make it faster. Stop. I'm gonna do this every time. Every time. Uh-huh. Gotta entertain myself somehow. Wow, that's rude. Dallas is entertaining <laughs> right now by painting. Okay, here it is. Much better. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just hurtful, Tony. All right, those need some contrast colors. So let those dry a little bit. Uh, Necrotite green soles, yes? No, you got to do them red. Come on. Red soles. Do, do them different. It doesn't have to be red. Just pick a color that's not green. We've all seen green soles. Make different soles. All right. Not blue either. Blue's too easy. Maybe purple. Purple or red? Jason soles. I don't... I mean, if just, you want to paint adjacent soles on every single one of those soles, I'd be impressed. <laughs> just black. <laughs> Flat black, black soles. Black soles. <laughs> Dark hearts, black souls. Oh, that brush is taking a beating. Is that is that brush a little roughed up? Yeah, well, it's... from all your paint mushing or mashing or whatever you call it. Oh, you know what? Let's do something else first. Oh, where are we going now, Dallas? Hang on. We need to... Do we need roads to go there? We don't. That's what I like to hear. I'm going to pull that red off that. I want to change that. Oh, man, this brush is rough. It's putting stuff on the model. <laughs> we want to do something else with those soles first. And that something else is going to be... Hidicule is asking what color you would use to depict Technomancy. Technomancy? Uh, I would say blue, but... <clears throat> blue, probably, yeah. I would use blue. Or maybe like a teal. There's the color. Are you pulling out some Cygnus yellow on us? Cygnus yellow. Oh, that, is a, that is a pure yellow. It's a bold move. It's a bold move, Cotton. All right, Tony, explain something to me. I'm watching you, I'm watching you do all these clicky things. Mm -hmm. Every time you open up the paint swatches, you always click on Blight Shroud first. Yeah, it's because... What's that about? It's because... Uh, 
Well, the blight trout part, I don't know, but it's just the click because otherwise I can't use the the scrolly wheel. Yeah, but work. you always click on blight. Well, it's just, it must just be right there. There's 12 different colors on that screen. You click on the bright, blight trout every <laughs> time. Oh, Cygnus yellow. I like that. That stays. The Cygnus yellow? Um, well, not the Cygnus yellow, but I'm keeping the zoom paint oh. splats. That, that's where you It's also, it. even, like, even without the sound effect, it makes more sense. It's we a, need it a, is a paint a, splat. There's clearly okay. been an impact that happens every mm. time one of these shows up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, if you put it in the show, I'll totally go through every single paint we have, and I'll say them. <laughs> so whenever you click it, it also does the vocal. Oh. So you click it, and it's like, coal black. Yeah. Cygnus yellow. Cable and then red bass. Chunky guitar riff right after that. We don't even chunk. Oh, Jeez. ooh, I like that better. Chunk. <laughs> chunk. I mean, that is a chunky guitar riff. Oh, okay. Red Death M says, down with the Cygnus. Da I'm down with the Cygnus. <laughs> you Oosh. were. You were sick yesterday. And yet, here you are. Yeah, here I am. Here you are. Better. Rock it out. I heal quick. Whoop. Let's put some glow in his eyes. Yellow down in there. So we asked for red souls. We're getting bright yellow souls. What's mm -hmm. the next step here, Dallas? Where are you, where are you taking us? Uh, well, I, I want the yellow to make the red more vibrant. So the yellow will go, and then we'll put some orange, and then we'll start reddening them up. Souls. They're very solely. Soli oleo. Woo woo. Soli oleo. My jungle love. Soli oleo. <laughs> what has happened? <laughs> uh, heart fire? Heart fire. Heart fire. That's just more yellow. I yeah. feel like yeah. I feel like you're leading us down a path of yellow here. The madness of yellow. What was the first thing you painted when you got brought on board, Dallas? Remind me. Uh, my very first day, or is that what we're talking about yeah, today? Yeah, yeah, we're talking about stuff? first days. First Activating days. the nostalgia machine. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. My very first day, I walked in, and uh, Matt DePietro was on vacation. Yep. Ron Cruzy was on vacation. So well, Ed the was here. Ed was here, but Ed, like, as Ed. Sure. Like, he had to have something for you to paint. There was a firefly okay. laying on my yep. desk, two paintbrushes, and a note from Jordy, the previous painter, <clears throat> that basically paraphrased down to, good luck, chump. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to do any of this. Yeah. And it was just like, you have to paint this. And Ron and Matt was on vacation. So I pulled the paintbrush out, and I'm like, all right, I'm... I'm going to I'm going to prove my worth. Here we go. And I go to paint and that little hairs went bling. <laughs> and I was like, "Jordy gave me bad brushes." Jordy gave me used bad brushes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I went to Ed and I was like, "Ed, um, so where's the brushes?" He's like, "Why do you need brushes?" And I was like, "Cuz I don't have good brushes. Like, I think I was left bad brushes." He's like, "I don't know where brushes are kept. Ron does." I'm like, "Ron's on vacation." He goes, "Okay." <laughs> What do you want? Because you know how Ed works. Yep. Ed is like, what do you want? You pose it. Like, if you're going to pose a problem. I want brushes. I want brushes. That's all I want. Yep. Nope. Did you get brushes or did you use the broken brushes? I used the broken brushes. Did you brush razor the brushes? Did you razor some of the bristles off? To I like razored one brush? them up. Uh -huh. I used them all day and I brought my own brushes from home the next day. See, Ed solved the problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By making them yeah. my problem. Yeah. <laughs> It's that kind of like initiative teaching that has brought you to the point that you are today, Dallas. It's true. I'm all about initiative. I'm all about you see a thing. That was the firefly that wound up on the Mark III battle group box? Yeah. Yeah. And then my so that was my test model. Like that's your because like we do not, I wouldn't say test models, but definitely test models. Um like kind of the proving ground for studio painters, a little inside chat here um that was like my do you have it can you get it and do you want it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh my next official the one that went on like a studio box like a solicitation box was Barathrum. 
I didn't realize that you painted him. No. Although, actually, he's one of those rare models where I don't remember him ever being painted or being made. I remember him being talked about a lot, but I don't know that I've ever seen that model in, like, real life. He's in the case. Yeah, you say that, but I'd have to go down and look at the case. Hey, Dallas, Corey wants to know what your favorite brush size is. Uh, size two. Oh, my gosh, Alec. Do we ever prank each other? <laughs> like, I don't. The, I think the more important question is, is any of this not just an elaborate prank? <laughs> like, I'm still undecided on that. Fair. Uh, so what? So, OK, so we know that I on my first day, I mean, I I got handed. Yeah. All, uh, yeah. A whole bunch of videos. Of just yeah. like it, this is huge. Go. Yeah. Uh, Dallas came in also uh-huh. just kind of like, I, here's the thing. Figure it out. Ten years ago, what was yours? Oh, you want to know my first I wanna, day? I want to know your first day. All right. So my first day, I came in, and I'm like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I got hired as the retail support guy. And there was another retail support guy here named Chris Fry, who I was supposed to be working with. And I walked in, and I did my paperwork, right? But my first day was when like all of the, the main people at Privateer were at Comic-Con. So for the first week I was here, like a quarter of the company was gone. And that included Matt, Sherry, my, the people who were like my direct bosses. Some key personnel. Some key personnel. You know, there was, so it was just like this ghost town. And I walked in and I did my paperwork and I was like, okay, what am I going to work on? And Chris is like, well, I've been instructed not to train you on anything until everybody's back. <laughs> so here's a, monster, here's a monster apocalypse rule book. Go ahead and read that. And then when you're done with that, go ahead and read it again. I read that monster apocalypse rule book. For like three days, because I didn't, I was, just, I don't know what to do. Like, you can't get trained, and uh, what, what do you want? Like, I got a couple of things, you know, here and there, just like call this retailer, do this thing, but yeah, there was, nope, I can't train you. So I got thrown in the deep end. Yeah, Dallas got thrown in the it's, deep end. You got told to sit down and yeah, just, just, just read this. Just read, just read this thing. Nice. Look at this thing. It, you know. It was it was what it was, <laughs> but then they came back. So everybody got back. Of course, you take a day off after you come back from a convention, and everybody's burnt out. But that was a year where there was a week. There was one week, one business week between Comic Con and Gen Con. So everybody came back. I saw Sherry, who was like my direct, for maybe three days, of which she had no time for me because she was busy with everything else. And then they left for Gen, for Con, Gen Con for another for week. week. I was just like, I don't, I don't even know what to do at this point. <laughs> One of the cool things about that week back, though, was Monster Pockets was obviously launching, and so it was a big deal. So in that week back, we actually wound up having this all hands where everybody in the company went down to the warehouse, and we all packed preview product of Monster Pockets because we didn't have the official stuff from China, uh, the Chinese manufacturer yet, but we had a bunch of single units and monsters. We had like a selection of the ones that were done. And so what they decided to do is they were going to pack them by hand in the office, and then we have preview boxes. And so people who went to Con- or to Gen Con or PAX in 2008 probably got a preview box that had a sticker and everything. I hand-packed a bunch of those <laughs> with Doug Seacat, and, uh, and like Matt was down there. And so like there was all these people. So I didn't get trained, but I got to hang out in the warehouse and like pack Monpox stuff. And it was, it was amazing because I got to meet all these people, yeah. and we just like BSed about everything. And... Doug was talking about Mulg and Horlock Doomshaper running into the woods together and having a, ro- a bromance because Metamorphosis was being worked on at the time and all this stuff. And so it was, it was really cool. Like it was the thing that kind of cemented in uh, the, the kind of the family camaraderie, that, that shared sense of privateer press that, you know, I, I've loved forever. But it was, a, yeah, it was a wild time. I, I'll never forget that. Welcome to privateer press. I can't train you on anything. <laughs> Oh, so what am I supposed to do? I, I, I don't know. Here's this thing. Here's the few things you were handed. It was a good way to kind of like just, you know, slide into it. Yeah. And, and, then, I'll, and then everything like ramped up from there, right? It's kind of like here's a few bolts and some toothpicks. What can exactly. you make with What this? are you going to do? Uh, yeah, so that, that was cool. The other, the other thing about like right when I came on was Mark II was just getting play tested. Like it was starting to become this real thing. So, and, uh, and, uh, of course, they had, you know, there's like, there's limitations on when new employees can play test. So 
I had to just keep a keen ear out for like what was changing and stuff. And every once in a while, I'd like pry people with secrets. All the stuff that new hires did to me later <laughs> after I became a veteran, there was like, dude, you'll get there. Just stop, stop, stop doing it. But man, I, it was so, it was great. It was so awesome. Dallas, what color are you using right now? Uh, red ink and Heartfire. Red ink and Heartfire. Comes the red ink. Shh. Red ink. Red ink. What am I on? Chicka-chum. See, you said that you had to click on the thing to make it work. I just noticed you didn't click on the blight. That, well, no, it's, yeah. it's because I didn't use the wheel. I went it's because you're full of lies. I change it up. It's because you're full of I lies. I change it up. No, it's just full See, of lies. See, look, you can't habituate Dallas, yourself you to doing things one way. He's it's like, you, you know, sometimes you got to brush your teeth with the left hand, too. Just what? to like change Why? it, yeah, because it's like neurons firing or some sort of science what? thing. I don't really know. <laughs> Brush your teeth with your left hand. Yeah. Did you just lie again? No, I didn't lie. It's like so. That's so, a lie itself. <laughs> the neurons in your brain, like you, create new pathways by yeah. repeating habits. But yes. also, one of the things that keeps those pathways growing is by changing up what you do and adding in new routines. So something as simple as trying to brush your teeth with your left hand or when you your walk from your car to the front door of work, like if you take a different route, it causes your brain to have to do more work. It's small things. I mean, doing it once isn't going to like make you smarter or change things, but it keeps your brain activated. Did you learn this from somebody wearing a crystal? I read. (laughs) I read. Yeah, but read what, Tony? Just just because something is in print doesn't make it legitimate. That's yeah. fair. That is fair. Yeah. Books doesn't make things <laughs> real. Oh, Ed Burrell. Hi, Ed. Ed Burrell. Yeah, that's true. I, I, did, I did give... Doug Hamilton, our our famous sculptor, a, quite a bit of grief about his Aurora model looking looking like she had a man face, a very strong masculine jaw. I hope your first child is a manly child. There, there's been a lot of conversation about like us pranking in the office, but like, I mean, I've been here a while. I don't see a lot of pranks. There is really endless trolling. it's because we don't prank you it we, is endless troll we don't we don't prank you i mean just recently i got mike ryan our our director of publications he bought me this book last christmas as a gift called dracula versus hitler or hitler versus dracula i don't know one of those conjugations and uh and he wound up asking me about it or something i don't remember how we got on the topic of the conversation maybe because christmas was coming he's like oh, i want to get you something else again i was like okay you really don't have to but that's super nice of you and uh and he's like, yeah, like that book I got you last year. I was like, what book? And he was like, the book. And I was like, what book are you talking about? He's like, I don't, I don't quite remember, but like, it has something about Dracula in it. I know I got you a book. And I was like, you didn't give me a book, Mike. I kept that up for like the whole day. And he was like, no, I know I got you the book. <laughs> and then uh, I, I went out of town on a, on a vacation or a trip, and I had JR staying at my house. And I was like, JR, there's a book I'm going to leave for you on the counter. And you need to take that book on Monday when you go into work. I need you to bring it with you. And I need you to tell Mike, you'd be like, oh, so we were talking in the we were talking the other day, and Will was saying that you bought him a book that you didn't buy. He's like, I know why you think that. It's because you bought that book for me. And here it is. I got him to the point to where Mike, when I came back, I was like, so Mike, did you talk to JR? Because I hear he had something interesting to say about this book thing that you kept telling me that I had done. And he, and he like he looked at me, and he was just like, I swear I got you that book. I don't know... I don't know how I got this bit, but I swear I got you that book. But I guess I didn't. And then he just like, Charlie Brown walked off, and I was like, yes! <laughs> I told him like two weeks later that he had got me the book, but it was amazing. There are very few times where you can like see somebody be like, do I have memory problems? I don't think I have memory problems, but maybe I have memory problems. I remember Ed's first day. Oh, he I came wanna, in and hear this. immediately thought I was an idiot. That's yeah. what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what he was asking for. He was asking for something that we didn't do. And I was like, well, I can get that for you. We laughed about it later. <laughs> How much later? Uh, I don't know, like a few months later. You know? Thankfully, I wasn't actually an idiot. So it didn't take too long to disprove that notion. But originally, yeah, he thought I was an idiot, which is fair. 
<laughs> How you doing over there, Dallas? You're so quiet today. I'm just listening to the stories and trying to paint super fast. It's looking good. I dig the uh, the orange soles. It's a little more festive red. We can go a little redder down here. <laughs> Ed says he got kicked out of the marketing meeting. I feel like you wanted to get kicked out of the marketing meeting. That's... That's what I feel like. Psychological terrorism. I make this place <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> Plus, if you knew Mike, you'd be like, well, it, yeah. What other things have we done? I mean, we've done some great things around here in terms of like pranks and just you're right though it's mostly trolling it's, it's mostly it's not just a lot of like high end busting each other's chops all it's, day it's long. just getting each other yeah you know well yeah i mean yeah <laughs> what was that it's true it's like it's like am i busting your am i busting your chops like that's a good thing oh there's lots of people People in the chat saying how much they're going to miss you. Oh, I'm going to miss you guys, too. It's going to be so sad. But I will be around. I'm not like... going to miss you. Oh, <laughs> that's harsh. But fair. I mean, who's going to come down and, you know, tell you to do things better now? I had to take over for Ed, though. Uh, another favorite Ed story that I had. Oh, I got a favorite Ed story. Was, oh, I have a favorite Ed story. I can't was tell when, uh, sure when we were doing Convergence. And they, this, like, I think it was DPH at the time and Cruzy. They built and painted the heavy vector, the first one, the little walker one, not the floaty one. And then I was going to build an army for no quarter, which eventually I gave to DC because he it was like his trial. It was convergence was very much his thing, and but he was out at the time. And we weren't sure if he was going to get back into the office in time to do the article. So I was like, okay, well I'll do it. It's fine. Um, and I I tried to start. I tried to build the heavy vectors, and I was like, wait a minute. I'm looking at the pictures and I'm looking at the pieces I have. Like, I can't do this. What did they do? I don't, I don't understand how this thing goes together. I didn't have instructions. I only had like the picture. And I finally figured out that the studio guys had put four back legs on the thing. So like the front leg, which was all like wonky and weird, it had like this weird like get up, which didn't make any sense. If you like looked at it for five seconds, you're like, did his leg get all swoopy or what happened here? <laughs> was the wrong leg. And so I came into the office the next day. I was like, Ed, Ed, I have something to tell you. They messed up on the legs. Those, the, the legs aren't right. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, look at it. And he's like, son of a bitch. And he walks downstairs and he goes, he puts it on the table in front of DiPietro and Ron. And he's like, tell me what's wrong with this model. And they're like, I don't know, it looks fine. He's like, this leg isn't the right leg. And they're like, oh. And then in front of him, he just breaks it off <laughs> and goes, fix it. And then walks away. And I was like, Kudos, sir. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's the amazing amazing thing about Ed is so many of the stories ends with and then he just breaks it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean to be fair, it had to be fixed. Did it get better after that? Well, yeah, they made the it thing. right. Yeah. But you know, to, to like walk up to a studio painter and just break their model in front of them. It was a great, like, you know, look what look at the mess you've made and rubbing their nose in it. I was, <laughs> You know, pay attention to the to the directions next time. That's all. Hey, man, sometimes you got to put somebody in the corner. Sometimes. Not baby, though. <laughs> you don't put baby in the corner. Sometimes you just got to put a guy in the corner. Okay, I'm blackening. Up. I mean, your head is like all in there it now. Is, yeah. is it? We're, yeah. just, we're just embracing the dome today. <laughs> Deal with it. Not even trying. Because normally when we're in here, like... Trying to suss out the camera and get that model. Yeah, you're you know, all against I'm always, it. I'm always yelling this, at Dallas this to lean a back, large. like get his glasses out of there. I don't like seeing the back of his head. This model's pretty big. You did have to zoom out quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, oh, that thing's looking. It's looking snazzy. Look at that. And you were all concerned you weren't going to finish it. You got. Look, Man, you we got, still got time. You got seven you got, minutes you got, to spare. You're going to start officially. You're going to start minutes. detailing the base long. for crying out loud at we, this point. Dull coat, do some highlights. The other thing I really miss about, you know, I, I do I do miss every once in a while with Ed is 
uh, doing Iron Painter, his judging was always the best. Because everyone thought he was being funny about it, and I was like, no, that's just how he is. God, he broke... <laughs> He broke so many of my models. <laughs> See, so that's Ed's comment is no one wants to break a studio model, so I took those bullets. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure you hated every minute of it. <laughs> Was the the year we did Iron Painter and we did the um, Behemoth, the new Behemoth resculpt? Mm-hmm. Ed just walked up and like they like usually they do like a little oh hmm oh let's let's pretend like we're judging yeah, Dallas yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> just destroyed it and so I walked up to a uh, table and some uh, guy was playing Kador and I just bequeathed him a broken <laughs> bequeathed him your parts I do remember that a broken behemoth like months before that thing was released I'm like it's early but it's broke and he was just like. That's fine. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I'm like, it's broke. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Yeah, so many good like the the first lock and load was another one. That that time was just crazy, man. I like back in the red line and getting everything set up and I was another one, Jason Martin, who used to do our conventions. Big who, blue ca- trying to I, kill everybody in stairwells. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh. So the red line in Seattle where we did the first lock and load. First of all, Jason Martin was brought on board maybe, you know, talking about being thrown in the deep end. <laughs> I think we hired Jason there's Martin. Run, there's a running theme Yeah, here. there's a running theme. We hired, you know, and this is the people who last are the people who can survive the <laughs> crucible, Tony. Uh, but Try no, he got, he got hired, I think, a month and a half before lock and load was supposed to happen. And he just like, he picked it up and he's like, I, What? And we were like, yeah, you, this is what's happening. We got to do all this stuff. And the Red Lion, you know, one of the, the great things about the Red Lion is it didn't have a freight elevator. Right. It only had That's regular right. elevators. Mm-hmm. And so we, this is the first year we get this giant, awesome Warjack sculpture that we nicknamed Big Blue. And we're like, how do we, how do we get it in? Because he won't, won't fit in the, won't fit in the elevator. elevators. And they were like, well, there's a staircase. You have to go through this weird gate which was too narrow for him. So we had to like carry his torso over the gate and then we had to bring it down and then we brought it up and we had to walk up this sheer like fire escape emergency landing to get him inside. I was incredible. But yeah, it was just, you know, everybody like working their asses off to get it done and then we did it and and it was it was an amazing time. And now, what was that? That was 2011? Yeah. So. That was about, yeah, it was about six months before I started. Yeah, but I had to carry that thing up the back stairs. Yep. The following yeah, the second the year, it was years, the same yeah. deal. And one we, of those years, it might have been the first one, but uh, but I think Big Blue caught some. Oh, he caught a light, light bulb. Yeah, he caught a light yeah. and and blew up a light. Yeah, we we may have had to replace that, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but that was that was good. That was that was a lot of fun, and just learning and and seeing things grow and and go different. I remember, I remember. Uh, Walking by, I think it was year two maybe, and Will Pagani and and was playing against I think Jason Flanzer at the time, and I was judging, so I'm kind of like I'm able to just kind of like tune in and watch things for a little bit before I had to run off and do a judge call, and I watched Will Pagani lose a game that he should have never lost. Like Flanzer was playing trolls and Pagani's playing Kruger two, and Kruger two is feeded and he's on the point. Like there's no way that Flanzer can get to him. And Flanzer kind of looks at the table and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna try this because I'm gonna lose anyway. And he like basically he furied a dire troll mauler, picked up one of his own boom howler dudes, threw him at Kruger, knocked, was able to get to him because of the plus three strength, knocked Kruger over because he actually hit, and then all of his boom howlers like moved their three inches closer and just gunned him down with <laughs> blunderbusses. Like that's the most work Boom Howlers Co. has ever done in the history of Privateer Press games. And uh, you know, the guy was just like, Yep, that just happened. And you know, he was out. Flanzer went on, I think, to win that year, but uh, uh, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah he beat. Um, and that was the first. JVM. That was the first game that we actually put on camera. That, w- yeah. that was the and the first game of commentary because that, that was my which everybody hated because the only thing we could do for commentary because they could hear us was to just announce what was happening. So it was like watching golf. <laughs> it was like uh, JVM moves his blighted Nis swordsman six inches. He declares an attack. He rolls a twelve. 
he hits. It was just like, like the most dull, <laughs> pointless thing. Yeah. We kept at it. We got better. We were it was, like, okay, yeah, it well. Was, it was just single you know? camera in the room, too. So It, it was. Just like, it was just top, top down. down top down was, camera. It was so crazy. Look at us now. Oh, I like it. I'm glad Back that the Deadpool the pocket's going to become a pocket. I don't like those fake pocket shirts, man. It's very it's distrustworthy. I think you got a pocket. You don't have a pocket. That's a problem for me. Don't lie to people about pockets. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's important. Dallas agrees. He's a pocket guy. Got to have a pocket. See, there you go. How are you doing over there, Dallas? What you, are you I'm still working on them soles? Tightening up the soles a little bit. They, I missed a couple He's gone soles. from rush mode to, oh, I've got all the time in the world now. <laughs> Literally seven minutes. Infinite time. Oh, that was seven minutes, six minutes ago. Oh. Oh, sure. Well, there you go. You've got another 20. Let's stretch this one out. But Shik, this is your this Let's is your last everything. this is your last get to get your paint on. This is my second and last. So you get, get your paint you get on, to yeah. call when. Oh, we're I get done. to call yeah. it. Yeah, sweet. Well, I guess you know. Just Settle in, boys. Get ready to never leave. <laughs> this is now a forty-eight hour paint job, Dallas. Sure. Get going. I mean, we could do that, or not. A more red in the mouth. Let's get some of this cold steel. Do girls have all the pockets there? I've noticed a distinct lack of pockets on most like lady clothes. I think, I, or they have a lot of pockets, but they're not useful pockets. I think that's what she's saying. I think oh, her reference is just that guys have all the pockets. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, we do. We have useful pockets. It's like a one of my favorite stories about Brent. Oh, let's continue the nostalgia. I don't think you were there, Dallas, mm. for this one. Tony, I think, was. Do you remember when he got the nickname Bum Pockets? Because oh, it took him 20 he, minutes to oh, go through security. Let me, <laughs> let me tell a story. So we were in Boston for PAX East. Yes. And it was late. Yeah. It was after the con. Like I think we had cleaned everything up. It was like the last night. And and the the term Bum Pockets had just come up. I didn't know anything about the airport. And so I start laughing and like raising my eyebrows like, Bum Pockets? And then Jay Mart just... The, looks over at it where Plumber looks over at him and like just start like what do you got in your pockets right now and Brent <laughs> would wear this just like black kind of trench coat and just full packs of faction dice and wallets and stuffed animals and just he was just piling it on the table there were also it was like amazing crumpled napkins he'd been and carrying receipts. that around while we had been walking for miles around Boston yeah. for yeah. dinner no, like he got he got the he got the title because we were all going through security, and it took him I think almost twenty minutes to empty his pockets, <laughs> so he could get through security, and then of course he had to put everything back in his pockets. And we're watching this with fascination and horror. It just and and some of it is just garbage. Like there's no we're like what is that? He's like I don't know. It's just crumpled paper. Why do you have it in your pockets? I don't know. Why are you putting it back in your pockets? Like what are you doing? <laughs> So you his, don't have to do that. Exactly. His his pocket stash just became legendary. And it was it was everything. You're right. There'd be like full boxes of Q workshop dice mm -hmm. in there that you just pull out. There's like receipts, wallets. I think he had like four wallets. I it was it was insane. It was crazy. I stopped paying attention to what was coming out. I just started cataloging, like just started <laughs> mentally just watching the pile get bigger. And Ed is correct. Brent always wore super oversized clothes, primarily so his pockets were bigger <laughs> to fit all of his stuff. The man was a living backpack of garbage. <laughs> it's just like the worst Sherpa ever. It was. You, you still working on those soles, Dallas, or have you moved on to something else? Moved here? on to something, though. I got some Quicksilver, or Cold Steel, Quicksilver? I don't know. Cold Quicksilver. And I'm just doing a little highlights on the metals. Quicksilver. Back to the Quicksilver. <laughs> Wreckers Iron is suggesting that Brent become a new mini crate model. <laughs> He could be. He could be the goblin tinkerer, except instead of having a cart for his garbage, it's just in his pockets. I don't know how you'd represent that on miniature form. It would but just be, bul just be bulging, bulging and spilling out. out. Yeah. Just hands with stuff spilling out of them, like just falling. 
<laughs> oh man. Yep, another another really great like classic memory is so talking about Pax East where you learned the horror of Brent's pockets. <laughs> Jay Mar- Jason Martin and I went the year before that to scout the show. Mm-hmm. And so we went out there, and I don't know what it is about Jason Martin and I at a show, but if we get in a cab together, terrible things are going to happen. Like, to the poor cabbie. So we, we were driving. We were going to get a, a cab back to our hotel from the convention center, like after the show or whatever, and we get in the cab, and we made it maybe 20 feet before this cop pulls over the cabbie, and he's like, are you talking on your cell phone? And the cabbie's like, uh... And then, like, the cop just starts going into it, right? <laughs> and... He's like, is the meter still running? Turn that meter off. You're not going to charge these people for like your mess up. And he turns the meter off. And he's like, you know what, guys? You just go out and get a different cab. I got this. <laughs> like, okay, so let's get out of the cab. And then the second year, no, it was Comic-Con the following year. He, we're, we're going back. He and I get into the cab together. And the cabbie like gets ready to pull out. And a car just, bam, right into the side. Just takes off the side view mirror, like scrapes everything up, all that stuff. And we're just like... We just got we just we just got hit by a car, boys. Like, we got a plane to catch. Like, short. Sure, what do we do? And they basically like the hotel people. Are like, oh, and they run out. And they just throw all of our bags into another cab, and we take off. We're like, what's going to happen to this cab? So we made a new rule after that. We were like, we can never be in the same cab together, because whenever he and I get in a cab at a show together, something awful happens to the cab. And it also requires to you to get out of the yeah, cab. and it requires us to get a new cab. So if we just we remain split up. <laughs> just, I was like, I've never, never experienced this stuff before. It was just terrible. What do you think, Tony? Uh, what is one thing I wish we had done game or model wise? Oh my, that's that's a really good question. Um, mm, let's let's think back. <laughs> There's been a lot of like things that we've talked about that I thought would have been really amazing, and then we typically wound up replacing them with things that were pretty much a one to one. Man, I'm gonna have to think about that for a second. Like, it's hard to pin down just one thing. I think I don't know. Something you can think of, Dallas. What about you? Can you no, think of something? I, well, part of the challenge is that, like, you know, when you're when you're living in the building and you're seeing everything from the moment it starts and what like ideas are and where things go and how they eventually end up and then how they end up is just the reality. It can actually be a little difficult to remember what I, what you, know, you might have been trying to do or wanting to have happen at the time. Yeah, I think people don't realize how organic the. Uh the creative processes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it, it definitely like everything transmutes and shifts and things wind up one way or another because of, you know, considerations on how, well, for how materials reason, work right? and yeah. what you can do. Like there's so many different factors to go into it. I think, man, I think one of the ones that I thought would have been really cool, but wound up not really being feasible because of scope and everything we talked about a like a Tharn chariot, but it was a flying chariot pulled by giant bats. And like like Tharn dudes, like I don't know how they were gonna ride them or how the thing was like, but it was gonna be just be this like awesome bat Tharn craziness, right? And in my head, I was like, that could be really cool, but uh, also a, a friggin' nightmare <laughs> in terms of like how do you make that thing? You know, you can draw anything. But to make a drawing actually a thing is way different. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realize. Like, that's like the, uh, like yesterday we showed the iron head for steelheads. And everybody's like, what option is it? And it's like, well, it's only going to be one. You don't get both. And the hatch is closed. And there's a lot of conversation about that and why we make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so many, there's so many checkpoints that the idea has to get through that. You know, people have to uh, at least approve can be done, mm-hmm. like, even made. Yeah. So between you know the the concept art drawing comes out and it looks super cool, and like I'll see those drawings, get all excited, <laughs> and then Ron or Dallas will look at it and be like, 
yeah, we can't do this. Yeah, this like this, this isn't a thing. This drawing can't like we can't have, so we have to modify the drawing to something that can be made, and then that gets engineered. And I'll, I'll pretend I know still, what goes on down there. We but still I try to make it cool. Steps. Well, yeah, cool is always the. I mean, cool I'm I'm kind of like uh, honestly, I'm amazed at how so many things that I've looked at and been like, "There's no way you can make this." have been made Mm -hmm. like the well of orboros is probably the most recent example of something like that That where you can draw it on paper and you go that's amazing and you go yeah but now it has to be a thing that supports itself and you can't use magic magical anti-gravityness to make it a thing Mm -hmm. and to to just watch the process of okay well these things can support here and this will go here and and like the feat of engineering that some of the models that we've made over the last 10 years that I've been here have gone through to become things is incredible. You know, it's, I, I think one of the other ones that I can think of like way back when is the Wraith engine. Uh, when we initially were going to do the battle engines, we're gonna make this thing. The Wraith engine went through a ton of different versions, a ton, because nobody really knew exactly what Wraith engine meant. And there were a lot of ideas and I don't know if, Ed is the one who pitched this, or if it was just one of the original Wilson sketches or something. But we had this idea that the Wraith engine was going to be like this dude inside of the engine, like pulling levers, and you'd be able to see <laughs> into his chest and stuff. I always thought that was really cool, like this like undead golem with a little pilot that you could see, like you know, <laughs> doing things inside of and stuff. And I was like, that'd be really sweet. You could get all like Hellraiser with it or whatever, make it really gross. Um, but. Yeah, so it's you know it's just, it's just a process. Everything everything gets different and changes, and you know comes out in the end the way it does. And the cool thing about modeling, of course, and the hobby is that if you wind up with a terminus and you're like, man, it's cool, I can make it better. Get it, get go. a saw, get and make it there. better, right? <laughs> I know I'm by no means a very good sculptor, but you know a little bit of putty and you just kind of mash it together. Oh man. Uh, you gotta, you ain't gonna let some little thing like skill get in your way. Dallas, we were just talking about this this morning. How we hadn't had anybody ask about your painting mic stand uh, until just now. So you want to tell people what your mic stand uh, is for? Uh, yeah, this is for me to keep the model on camera. So it's just a mic stand with some putty. Uh, this is a primer lid. You get a free uh, painting handle with every purchase of P3 primer. Uh, Double side tape. Base, good to go. Don't touch the model. Gives you a nice little grip to hang on to. Get your paint on. I don't like this. <laughs> why? Yeah, but why? Tell them why you use it. Because it keeps me on camera and you don't yell at me. Yeah. So that's not something you recommend for home use. Some people like it. I know a couple of people have been doing them at home and they like it, but I, I, I don't. So you got to try whatever works for you is right. My favorite project that I worked mm-hmm. on. Ooh, that one's hard. They've they've all been like every project is, I don't know, like a child, right? They have their ups, they have their downs, and then you get there and they're amazing and you get to release them and everybody goes crazy or they say, Why didn't you do it this way? And you're like, Well, we looked at it that way, but we decided to go this way. And you know, it's I think I think some of the ones that are probably the most special, the Colossals was a huge one, right? That was it was such a step forward for privateer and, and kind of like this thing that really catapulted war machine and hordes into the next phase and being at the ground level of that and being able to, to talk and, and, and do that kind of stuff was really big. Um, new monster apocalypse, like, like being able to come back in 10 years later and, you know, the read only the th- rule book, read again. the rule book again, <laughs> effectively. Uh, that was, you know, that was that was really it was really important. And Monpoc was one of those things that we talked about for years and years and years after the collectible ministries game ended about how how do we bring it back? What do we what do we want to do with it? And it was one of those ones that you always knew was going to come back. You just never knew how. And we went through so many different iterations of ideas for that property and and that thing. And to kind of wind back at a second edition of the miniatures game as a hobby game and all this stuff. To me, that was really. That was really cool. It was it was it was really kind of a, a big a big thing, a big moment. And I'm you know, poetically it's kind of nice that I, I get to go out on that note as well. Uh, nice. You know? It's kind of a good bookend. I started with Mom Pac, I end I end a bit with Mom Pac. Um so that was that was really neat. Uh you know, being part of the live streams, they did 
everything that we do now, really, the genesis of it was Lyle. That's right. Uh, and like, because he, you know, Lyle, Lyle is a funny dude. I, I love that that boy to death. Like, but he, he's just quiet. Such right? a reserved. Yeah. He's such a humor. reserved and like, so he doesn't get excited very often. And, and he came in, you know, as the, he took over for me as marketing manager and director and stuff when I moved up to business development and, and everything in my natural progression. And, and so he did the job for a while and I think it was like a year or so into everything. And he was, he was firing all cylinders and stuff. And he, he came in and he's like, and he was kind of, I don't know, bubbly for a while. He, he's jittery a little bit. He's like, I got an idea. And I was like, okay, what's the idea, Lyle? It's like, we need to do live streams. I was like, what? And he's like, we need to do live streams. I'm like, what are those? And he, because <laughs> I didn't know. I, I mean, at the time, they, they were just coming out like with video games and Dota and League of Legends were right. starting to make these things big. And I don't really follow that stuff. So I was like, okay, well, explain to me what you want. And he kind of laid out this whole plan. And apparently he had talked to you about it. Yeah. Already. We, we, and you yeah, guys had brainstormed on yeah, it. Yeah, we had. And so he, we put together a little pitch. Yeah. He kind of he lays out this pitch, and I'm like, okay, that sounds really cool, and I can see how, you know, this would really fit in, and, and it could work really well, and and so he's like, okay, great, and you know, we worked on you guys worked on the proposal. We we pitched it to Matt and Sherry. They're like, okay, we think this will really work, and we do all this stuff, and we're like, okay, and we're gonna launch it at, uh, we're gonna do our first live stream effectively. At TempleCon. Yeah, 2013. 2013. Uh, and and uh, then, of course, our stuff doesn't get delivered. <laughs> which, which we found out on the break between our connecting flights. Yep. yep. So we get, the, yeah, we get off the plane, and the first thing anybody sees is like, oh, yeah, all that equipment just yeah. vanished. And that was when we were supposed to, we were doing Convergence, right? Mm -hmm. That was the Convergence yep. video. So, like, so Tony finds this out. He, of course, starts to freak out a little bit because what are we going to do? We promised everybody we were going to do this live stream. We don't know where the equipment is. Clearly, it's just been misplaced. We'll find it when we get to the hotel. We get to the hotel. And it's like 6 p.m. at night. Ed's there, too. He remembers all this, I'm sure. We start looking everywhere. They're like, we can't find it. We don't know where any of it is. We're like, what? It's a, it's a giant, what? like, right. it's huge crate. It's this huge black crate filled with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment at this point <laughs> that we just bought and now nobody can find it. And so everybody's freaking out. The office is freaking out. We're trying to figure this thing out. And we're finally like, okay, well, we have to come up with a contingency. What are we going to do? And Tony's like, well, I have it on a flash drive. We can just, you know, play the video and they can post it online later and whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is such a bummer. It's like 1030 at night. Oh, we stayed up till 2 a.m. trying to get that yeah. thing to work, but nobody, nobody had a laptop that was... Well, that could handle the video playback. Yeah, yeah, and and so it's what was it? We get up, it we're like, okay, well, we'll just go to bed, we'll wake up really early, we'll have breakfast, and we'll figure this out. It was right? sad like, breakfast too. It was sad breakfast. And we get in, and the the AV guy who hadn't been there that night because he'd gone home and they couldn't get a hold of shows up, and he's like, "Did you guys private your brush? You looking for those crates?" And we're like, "Yes," and he's like, "Oh, they got delivered like three days ago. They're right there in this rando room that nobody was paying attention to." And we're like, "What?" We and. Two hours till go time. <laughs> yeah. And I remember it was either you or Ed looked at me and was like, Tony, two hours. And I was like, I'm like <laughs> absolutely terrified, said nothing for a few seconds. And then it was just like, all right, let's go. Okay. Let's see how well, this goes out. Because the whole setup. The, but we had never we'd, done, we'd never done it. So other than setting it up in the office mm -hmm. and verifying that it all worked, this was the first field test and we're yep. having to do it under under significant duress pressure. i remember like calling back and forth with wilson and simon and be like okay we think we can do it we're gonna give it a shot let people know that maybe it's on but maybe it's not i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd get going and we call back in 20 minutes later it seems to be going pretty good it's probably on but maybe it's not just be just be ready and i think like the whole thing it was right to the last minute and finally you're like testing it and i'm like are we good you're like i think we're good and so I called and I was like, okay, launch it, launch it. And Simon sends out his little note. He's like, we are doing live stream now. Like, check it out, do this thing. And it was huge and it was successful. But it rarely do I ever see you get truly like flustered. That was one of the rare times where I saw like the monster that is Tony. <laughs> it was scary. It was a little scary. I was like, oh my God, I think Tony might, I think Tony might snap. What's happening here? But oh, that was, that was a great moment. Like. Yeah, DEFCON Tony is absolutely right, Ed. Like, it was crazy. But 
like that was the that was the launch and then you know you guys like you and Lyle made it better and better and better and you know goofballs like me and Dallas and Hungerford and got on in DC and you know every year was an improvement you always came back with cooler things and I'd look at you and be like I want to be able to draw like in the NFL and you'd be like you can't do that I'd be like I want to be able to draw like in the NFL like, all right I'll see what I can do <laughs> now we're drawing like in the NFL and all this yeah. you know it's it's been amazing it's I think those are like those are really the things that just the way that the group, the crew comes together yeah, and makes yes. things out of literally nothing sometimes. <laughs> and then getting to share kind of that excitement with everybody, you know, the, mm. the colossal drop at TempleCon will always be one of those, like, gives me the shivers moments because I knew it was coming, but watching it with everybody else and like hearing the, the crowd reaction and feeling that energy the same like when Lock and Load opens. Are you done? Three years Gen Con, me, you, and Matt Getz had to build a crate out, oh, of, yeah. out of uh scavenged oh, uh, pallets. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> to get to get the oh man, that was so bad. They destroyed everything. See, this take like, take this as a lesson, folks. Like all the bad stuff that happens to you that you don't want to have happen and isn't pleasant ends up being like bringing people together, forging relationships. I'd, I'd like a, and I'd like a two gray second hairs. moment where I was just like, I don't know how to do this. And Getz is just like, get a hammer. And then suddenly, yeah. <laughs> suddenly everything made sense. And me, you, yep. Chick, and Getz, we just tore apart pallets and we built yep. a crate. Oh, man. It looked like zombies were trying to get out of those things, too. Like, we did the whole cross beams yep. with, like, broken wood. <laughs> like, screw just like, it. Just screw it in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it can't be taken apart We later. hammered in screws, for <laughs> sure. It's just like, didn't matter. <laughs> Look, all we had to do was get it back to the office. We that got was it home. That was the whole rule. Home. We Will Burke talking about TSA trying to stop, like, you know, an Emmanuel class, talking about, like, the difficulties of getting uh, miniature bags on planes at times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, take that and imagine that you have studio models that oh. aren't yours. D trying to get studio models on an airplane and, and be able to put them up in the baggage compartment and not have them check that bag at the last minute and toss it into <laughs> wherever they put luggage. Like... I've just heard like near screaming matches with airline staff and just being like, I'm not was, putting this in the belly of the was, plane. Since I've been here, there's been, I've told everybody and there's been a open, like, this is how you deal with it. If the TSA stops you get Dallas, he will escalate. <laughs> he will escalate. I will, I will go, oh, man. I will go full on TSA <laughs> to get those studio models on a plane. Yeah, another great, another great Brent moment. He had, he had one of the bags and, uh, it was TempleCon, I think. I think it was TempleCon. And we had to get on one of those little puddle jumpers from like DC to Rhode Island. And uh, and there's no room to put the bags anywhere. But for whatever reason, Martin and I, who have bags, and my bag has a conquest in it. Like, this is a big deal. I cannot give up this bag. Like, we kind of use our bodies to block how big the bags are and <laughs> run on the plane really quick. And like, thankfully, we were able to just cram it under the, the table. But, uh, but then, like, Brent is, like, walking on, and they give him, they, they stop him out of the bag. They're like, that won't fit. You have to check. And he's like, I won't check this bag. I'm like, you have to check the bag. He's like, I, I won't check the bag. And then he Dallas escalated to the point where he's like, look, you don't understand. There are thousands of dollars worth of prototypes, prototypes. in this bag. Prototypes. I will not give up this bag. <laughs> you will have to remove me from this flight. And somehow, they didn't remove him from the flight. They were just like, fine, just make sure that you keep it, like, in your lap the whole time. And it was his infant. <laughs> so he had to carry the bag in his lap. Uh, it was just, it was now, ridiculous. We haven't had problems. I mean, there, there hasn't been problems with flying anymore. That's, 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 that's old. Is it? I, I haven't seen any, we haven't had any problems in a long time. I remember when, uh, when we were forced to gate check our bags, Plumber and I were, we were going somewhere and I, Plumber was like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, we don't have a choice. We have to get on this plane. So. I guess Godspeed to the bags, and <laughs> we'll deal with it when we get there. That was the only time I ever had to check something, and it it was horrifying. But they came out okay. We had a couple of breakages, but we were able to fix them. I mean, the best thing is, is like most companies are making bags that are, you know, they're durable. They're durable, and they're carry-ons now. Yeah. It's mostly when you get on those tiny puddle jumpers. That's really if you have a small connection flight. Oh, when we went to SmogCon, 
we definitely had that moment where they were like, they were looking at our bags. Mm -hmm. They didn't say anything, but they were definitely right. like, are you sure you want that bag? And he, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are getting all of the uh, uh, behind the scenes action on the, uh, when everything's nice and nice and pretty and put together at the cons, oh. and now you're getting the front and back end of Look. what happens right before those moments. The sausage has to be made, and it's <laughs> never very pretty, but it always comes out delicious. So it takes a oh, lot man. of hard work and dedication. How about how about six more minutes? Okay, six That'll more minutes. That'll take us to an even eleven thirty. You even guys, eleven thirty. Yeah, you guys got fifty percent more. 50 get your paint more. on. I can't even see the clock. It's so tiny on your on your little screen. So I'm just talking. Plus, Dallas is painting. He's having a good time. Look at that. Oh, we just got a flood of hearts. <laughs> I just got a flood of paint. Did anybody see that on the screen? <laughs> like that paint was way overloaded. That's fine. This is gonna wash down in the crevasse. So I'm using a Caspian flush wash. It's much more yellow. And I'm going over all my metal with Caspian flush wash now. And it gives this kind of, I don't know, it's, I like the sheen it gives. It's really nice. Kind of brings it all together. Okay, here it comes Dallas. Just bring it all together. Just take your time. Caspian just bring flush wash. I know, he, did, he didn't even he do, do it. it. No, he's, he's Bob Ross in it right okay, now. Okay, we're going did back. We're him? going back. Rewind. Just take your time. Are you, just, are you, you two-timing me now? I'm two-timing you. Let's right. do it again. Reset. Ready? Okay, it's gone. And... Caspian flesh wash. I'll take it. <laughs> was I, I think, off? I think it could be better, yeah. All right. <clears throat> like I said, it's because he was in his Bob Ross mentality. Like Now that's, he's, that's he's really in the joy of painting right now. Mm, he's I talking about taking your time and... I did jump on appreciating him a thing. Bit. You sprung it on him. He wasn't you ready. You can't spring things he on him. He wasn't ready. I've got years of PTSD. Oh, that's kind of an interesting question. So are you planning to go to lock and load as a civilian? I mean, I'm I'm not leaving the area, so I will certainly try my goal is to just see how many things I can get into without people questioning it. <laughs> I've already told I've already told you, like I, I'm I'm halfway not joking when I say I'm just gonna like wander back behind where the streams happen with the commentators and just loudly eat Doritos or something. Just like be like, I'll let it happen. Waving, I know. Just, I feel like, like I could get away with quite a sit bit. Sit down. <laughs> just put you on stream, whatever. <laughs> I mean that that would really be my terror. That <laughs> I walk into I walk into lock and load like okay, well Schick's here. Go introduce everything. I'll be like, I don't know what's happening. They'll be like, you got this. You're still the master of ceremonies. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't know what the ceremonies are. <laughs> Sometimes you got to make it up. You never know. You know, it's Iron Painter it up. We've made it up. We, we have and, and been very successful. What's next for me? Um, I, don't, I don't really have anything specific yet. I've got, I've got some things. I'm going to enjoy my December with my, my kids and my family. Uh, I've got a little bit of like contracting and stuff, but I uh, mostly it's just kind of like I'm going to take a little bit of a gap month, I guess, as a way to kind of put it as I uh, as I determine where to go. So I don't know. I'm going to be lazy just just for a little bit. It's <laughs> so a little bit, a little lazy. Take some time. That's my plan this this December. Me too. I'm going to take two weeks vacation. I'm going to play Zelda. I'm going to paint. Oh, I get to keep my crazy sound guns. I thought about bequeathing them. Well, I should, probably shouldn't say that yet. <gasps> but, you know, the my my mobile soundboard, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like maybe John deserves one. He's been asking for the soundboard forever. It's the best I can give Bequeath them. them to me. Oh, to you? And they will become okay. part of the official live stream. Live stream setup? Package. So, okay. So they will just get laid out right. at the commentator you're gonna be a, table. You're going to be at Primecast tomorrow, And then right? whoever is commentating. I'm going to, yeah, I think, think I'm running Primecast. Okay, tomorrow. good, good. Perfect. Well, if I decide to go that route, I don't know. They're pretty special to me. Like the Cana the Canadian group who I love very much gave them to me at War Machine Weekend, and they've sat in my office and have been used numbers of times to chase people out of the <laughs> office by just playing rando like zoo sounds at them. So I feel like maybe they should come with me. But at the same time, they kind of have a tie here, and I I feel like you know the the tie to the live stream soundboarding may be important. So. It is a uh, hard to ask you a serious question when you're just sitting there roaring a bear gun. Yeah, at me. yeah, I was just <laughs> shooting a bear gun at you, or like a loon. <laughs> I think that's it. 
All right. Oh, he could be dull coded. He could be dull coded and highlighted, but Look at we this. can't do that on Get Your Paint On. Majesty. Look at that. Look at that. An hour, hour and a half. And I mean, you stopped to like chatter a bunch, so it's probably more like an hour. And you made him beautiful. I mean, I will say that you and I did a lot of heavy lifting for him today. We, we did. In Y'all terms did. Of the conversation, yeah. let him focus a little yeah. bit. So. Look, you didn't need me so at all. So we're a part of this. Are we? Yeah. This is our, this is our victory that is as well. This is our victory as well. Okay. Well, there you go. We'll Take th- your victories where you get them, Tony. Well, we'll right. roll us out, Dallas, one last time. Oh, wait. Well, we oh, got to tell people what's we going on tomorrow. We got to tell people what's going oh, on. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tomorrow's day. Uh, what's going on tomorrow? We got, we got Primecast Live. Primecast Live at 10 a.m. No, no, no. It's reversed. We are doing P3 Presents Live. At 10 a.m. Oh. 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 And then we are doing Primecast Live, featuring Will Schick again on your last live stream. That's true. At 1 p.m. 1 p.m. All right. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Did they purposely do that after lunch for a reason? Yeah, so we don't have to tear down in here oh, and then I reset like up it. downstairs. Right. We just back Good. to back. Yeah, back to back. It's to make sure you show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. So, so Prime or... Get your pan on live. No, nope. you're going to be P3 presents. P3 live. presents live. P3 presents live. Yeah, I'm already gone. We're going to paint croak flesh. Croak flesh. Mm-hmm. Croak flesh. We're going to paint a little croaker man because I, like I love croakers. I like it. They're adorable. That croaker man might be Meyer, right? It's Meyer. It is Meyer. Yeah. We're going to use Meyer, but we're just going to talk about how to paint skin, like how to get the green to yellow and the mm-hmm. little red mitts. Their little red suction cup. Oh mitts. yeah, their little. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. So we're gonna do that live, and then we'll, and then I guess uh, Primecast, Wilshick's yeah. final Primecast. Yeah, which, you know who knows what's gonna happen. Final Primecast live, featuring me. Nope. <laughs> Your sentence structure there could use a little work. <laughs> Maybe because now the Maybe speculation is loose. <laughs> final Primecast live. What? No, I mean we'll, oh, we'll be. Uh, Terminus one. I'm sure we'll be we'll be passing the torch to our next our next host co-host. Hungerford may actually get his host title. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he'll just get a new host and he can remain the co-host <laughs> for consistency. For cons- yeah. For consistency. We don't, want, we don't want people to be confused. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And he is he is the extreme co-host extraordinaire. He is a co-hostess with the mostest. Take us out, Dallas. All right. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Get your paint on. We painted Terminus. Crazy conversion. Uh, and it was fun. Uh, thanks, Schick. You're so welcome, Dallas. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye. See you tomorrow. <gasps> Falls oh, off and explodes. Probably. Boom. We'll see what happens. I will be host and none shall take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>